you know, okay, uh, I set this thing up for its... Do you see these lights over here? I just interrupted myself. That looks exactly like city lights. I mean, I know it's a bug. But it's a really cool bug. Look at it. Look at that bug. And that's not even what I was about to say. That's not what I was, I was planning to talk about. Okay, what I was planning to talk about, yeah. Um, as we've already set this thing up, we're going for a 30 kilometer initial periapsis. Uh, I was thinking about our weight and balance issues that we had previously, and a really simple solution occurred to me. Let me see, you have some of this, this fuel tank actually extending outside the wing to a degree, don't we? Or do I actually have to go inside and look inside the wing? Yeah, here we go. We have these fuel tanks inside of here. Uh, not that one. This one. No, that one's almost full of fuel. Here we go. Let's get this highlighted. So this one empty. What I can do to move some of this weight forward. Uh, okay, let's pull this one out of here. Oh, if I... Man, how can I change the view without clicking on anything? We'll try an arrow key. Good. Yeah, let's do it like this. And Alt-click on this one. Let's move liquid fuel out of here and into there. That moves some more weight up forward. Which strikes me as probably being a good thing. I know, I'm just carrying around all this heavy fuel just in case I want to fly around the world sometime. Which I still might. But we're not, we're not, we don't have to right now. Anyway, yeah, that's going to work. Yep, here we are. What is it, just under 34 kilometers and descending, um, and descending slowly. Everything seems to be running very, very much like before. No surprises yet, but again, we're still up here above Mach 6, so we uh, can't tell yet whether we're going to have the same problems at the lower airspeed that the previous version with the slightly shorter neck on it had. Okay, got some the beginning of some re-entry effects, so that's good. <laughs> pretty fireworks, you gotta like the pretty fireworks. Yeah, path is already falling short of KSC. Yep, about the same temperatures as before. Oh, I like this effect. See the lead, the leading edge of that glowing. I like that. <laughs> Okay, tell you what, at this point, let's go back to normal time. Uh, let's turn our jet engines back on. You see them sparking and flaring out. They don't have enough. Well, let's go ahead and throttle up some. And now they're running. I actually do maximum throttle. Let's turn the RCS off now. So, I don't really expect that to be doing anything. And begin to pitch up, just so we don't try, you know, we'll try not to drop too flo too far below 15 kilometers. Very gradually, that nose trying to come up. Yeah, you can see we definitely don't have as much pitch control as before. The question is, will it be sufficient? Oh, wait a second, I heard these things making thrust before. Or some, well, are some of them making thrust and some not? I'm on this. Here we go. There we go! That may have something to do with it. Let those things spool up. And start pitching backwards. Yeah, you can see that G load pulling on it. Already getting down a lower altitude than I wanted, but the nose is coming up. So, uh, yeah, definitely less pitch authority than we had before, but it appears to still be sufficient at Mach, anyway. This thing is dropping all the way down to 10 kilometers altitude. And let's climb back up to 15, dudes. And there's a climb going. Okay, let's try the SAS at this point. Will it... Will these oscillations kind of smooth out if I just leave it alone for a bit? Ah, oh, well, 
not really, but it's not really hurting anything at this point, and we are climbing. Here, let's try and climb some more. Climb a little more aggressively. Yeah, okay. Not really all that stable in roll, I mean, so you have to be really careful with that. Alright, there's a better climb. Let's go ahead and put some good deal of nose up trim into it as well. And there's our Mach number increasing again. Because we came down yeah, a little bit short. <laughs> and then this is the way we want the vehicle to work. So, uh, yeah, you don't have to be just get bullseye perfect uh, with uh, doing your whole retrograde burn for your re-entry burn. There's also th space planes in general, in my opinion, are so much more interesting to to re-enter than just uh, you know spam in a can capsules where you know your average capsule what you've got two steps burn retrograde and pop the parachute uh, that's it and and everything else happens uh, wh whether you want it to or not this you know if you've got a space plane on the other hand you've got a constant set of decisions to make you have some actual piloting to do uh, you know you're not just sitting there okay boom push one button push the second button Space planes, much, much more interesting, in my opinion. But, I don't know, I suppose just from the history of the channel, you could probably guess that. <laughs> I really do wonder if we could do, you know, load just a, a fuel tank in the cargo bay, do this thing from a runway start, try to do single stage to orbit. I'm, I don't really feel the need to experiment around with that for this series. It's kind of out, outside the scope of what I'm trying to do with this, but I believe that this this general structure, assuming that we can get the the low airspeed uh, stability problems worked out, uh, that the, the general design is very flexible. It can do a lot of different things. Somebody had a comment, why didn't I put the sabers on it? Well, you know, it's because I wanted a generally low tech so you can use it early on in a career mode, but it'd be really easy. You can just take these things off I replace those with the Sabre air intake and the, what do they call it, the pre-cooler, uh, you know, to com freezes the air. Oh, hey, we need to start pitching forward again. Let's not climb above 15. Let's actually just turn that SAS off. Let the nose come down. Yeah, just, just replace those and, you know, put Sabre engines back here. Bam, it works. And without the SAS on, we stop that incessant flapping. And it just naturally, the nose comes down a little bit. Let's trim back a little bit more. Let's try and see if we can get trim it out to uh, get enough trim to just maintain altitude. Give it a little bit of help. Okay, pitching back here. Let's see, okay, that uh, vertical speed very, very slowly coming back up. Okay, now let's let go of that, and let's see if we can just uh, so let's, let's give a starting point. Let's put our trim just like halfway up. Aiming for trying to maintain an altitude of 15 even kilometers. 15 kilometers even, I meant to say. Okay, yeah, a little bit above, but yeah, if we just just put the uh, trim indicator just right at the halfway point, it, the vehicle becomes very nicely responsive, overall responsive to pitch at this point. Let's go ahead and drop a little bit of altitude here as we approach 15. Let's pitch back some more and hold nose up attitude right about there a little bit too much <laughs> yeah we got that print pretty much trimmed to get the trimmed out just about right I mean you'll never get it trimmed out just perfectly in these these situations but it's pretty close Still doing this rocking back and forth thing. Yeah, a lot, a lot of that problem it could be resolved by by going with joystick. But again, uh, I want this, I want this airplane to be landable by people who do not own a joystick. Let's 
one of my des major design goals. It's unfortunate that the previous shuttle, the one that's based on the real deal, uh, unfortunate that that one did not meet that goal and it decided that it was not ever going to meet that goal, not not and still have the same shape as the real space shuttle. Just wasn't going to happen. <laughs> yep, got the trim just about balanced out at this point. I like that. This way, if a properly designed airplane, you do not need ASAS in order to hold uh, an attitude and a direction. You can just trim it out. And go ahead and allow it to just start descending here. Let's actually pitch, uh, change my trim. Start pitching forward some. And after we clear the top of the mountain range, we get start getting closer to Kerbal Space Center. I'm going to throttle back and we're going to go subsonic again. See what kind of an adventure that turns out to be. Big moment of truth. Did our design change? Uh, was, is it, was it good? Was it bad? Is it ineffectual? We'll find out. I like the look of those mock effects. That's cool. And now let's throttle back some. Throttle back to like one third throttle so we just keep some power in. Let's turn that SAS on. Remembering the previous lesson that we'll probably want it as we go through the transonic region. That looks pretty cool too. <laughs> I bet it's noisy down on the ground. hypersonic decelerating through Mach 3 from Mach 3 down to subsonic <laughs> interesting you see the yaw controller all the way over is it look continue to do that if I try to roll wings level all right it didn't like me touching that let's not touch that right now because we're here at Mach 1.3 and decelerating about to hit Mach 1.2 where I expect there to be problems yeah. Actually, the problems didn't show up until around Mach, just over Mach 1, and down to 0.8. Okay, yeah, there we start to have some pitch rocking back and forth. Uh, look at this yaw indicator all the way over. Uh, it's just still, it's not touch it for a while. Let's turn the SAS off. So this gets down below Mach 0.8. I'll actually throttle back some more. Kind of expedite that, that change. Okay, things are being... Now let's... Alright, let's try turning SAS off. Hello? Hello? Throttle up some more. Give it some power to work with. Uh, yeah, her nose. Well, that's okay. It's tending to wander a little bit more in yaw than previously. It's still sensitive in pitch, but not wildly so. I believe that that previous problem has very likely been corrected. Now let's do some mild trim back pitch back nose up a little bit more. Yeah, about that. About about two little, well, just like, yeah, one and a half little tick marks over there of, of trim. Pitch trim. Okay, uh, about this part I want to kind of maintain altitude. Let's pitch back a little bit more. Yeah, you still have to be gentle with the pitch control, but it's not going through the wild oscillations we saw before. I'm, I am encouraged by this. Trim back a little bit more. Yeah, that seems about right. Okay, and I'm not wanting I'm not gonna be looking to do anything really dramatic and exciting on this landing. I just want to come straight in, try and set it down nice and gentle, you know? Just slight and just ta tapping on that pitch just a little bit. 
and it's responding to control changes, but, but it's not responding violently. It's, 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 this is better. This is definitely better. Going to throttle back some more. Pitch back. Ah, no, let's leave the trim about where it is now. Actually cut throttle. Let's put those landing gear out. Add some drag and also adds uh, the, it gives the airplane a nose down tendency. Is our airspeed dropping? Okay, so these last landings were real. What was the word I used? Adventurous? Yeah. I do not want to see an adventurous landing this time. I want to see a calm, smooth, stable landing this time. Um, here's a problem. I'm pitching back, and the nose is not coming up, so it needs a little bit of throttle. Okay, throttle down. Yeah, okay. I'm okay if it needs a little bit of throttle at landing. That's that's acceptable to me. Cut the engine. Push pitch forward. Start hitting brakes. Yeah, okay. Alright, release the pitch button. Yeah, I can see it kind of flexing kind of wild there. That was kind of exciting. <laughs> but, I would say that was a much, much more controllable landing. Uh, you have the things you'll need to remember. It does need to keep your airspeed up on landing. It's maybe a faster landing than some you'd be accustomed to just to maintain its pitch authority. Uh, you know, you'd probably need a little, keep a little bit of throttle in, like a, like a, a third throttle in uh, landing to give you more, more pitch control. But that was entirely successful, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, I am going to call that um, a complete success. We have uh, met the, the design issues, the problems that the, the previous launch had, uh, and all of them are solved. The only thing left to do before just, just calling it done and releasing it is just maybe a tiny little bit of tweaking. I, uh, I mean, things like, I think it's carrying just a little bit too much fuel in the external fuel tank, because in a perfect world, I would like that thing to, to run dry um, at just about the same time, you know, like my usual, my traditional uh, point when that periapsis comes around to positive numbers. Uh, so, yeah, and, and maybe we could even look at reducing the thrust on the SRBs some. Um, I mean, but this is just really tiny little tweaking details that would be monotonous to attempt to record. Uh, record and publish. I don't feel the need to do that. So, yeah, we'll do just a few tiny little tweaks to this. We'll, and then I will put it together we'll, and we'll see if we can publish this. We'll share this on, I don't know, as I'm recording, I still ha I haven't done anything in far too long, the whole mod list and whatever, but uh, yeah, I'll share it there. Uh, and it'll be, it'll be a done project. Uh, I, I say, as of this moment, this series, uh, Space Shuttle Development, is done, finished, complete. Uh, this, is, this is the vehicle that I've been looking for for quite some time. And, and I was very, very happy to, to share with people, to share with viewers. Um, you get to see exactly what goes into uh, creating something like this. And uh, all, all the, you know, from the original idea to the troubleshooting to, to get it to finally work. And it does work. And, and I, I believe after all this work I put into this, I'm definitely looking forward to using this on some actual missions. Uh, for for you know for the 
career mode or other things. Yeah, I'm looking forward to doing some space station assembly with him. Uh, well, one limitation that we're going to have just because of the limitations of the game, uh, uh, because the entire launcher is, what I, th I believe it's 280 something parts. Uh, we may be limit. We can put heavy payloads in here, but we may be limited. You don't want a whole lot of parts in there, so it can do large but not really complex payloads. Um, yeah, that's so that may be one limitation. But I don't know if you're if you're okay with the slideshow, as I quite often am. Uh, maybe maybe that limitation isn't so harsh as long as the game will still continue to run. <laughs> Ellerith Millorf, Bob. Yeah, Bob was the pilot on this one. Excellent. It's been good. I'm so glad it works. I'm looking forward to sharing it with everybody. And yeah, I'll, well, now we'll, we'll come back next time with a different series. Probably get back into the continuation of that long ago abandoned career mode, the space race mode. I'm sure I've already lost. I lost the space race long ago. So we'll just call it like career mode and it'll be good. Thank you for watching. I'll talk to you later. Goodbye.